Shalom. My name is Rabbi P.J. Schwartz, and I'm thrilled to be your next instructor for this summer term. Over the next weeks, we're going to be taking a deep dive into the teenage psyche and explore ways in which we can support our teenagers during this crucial time in their lives. All of us who work with children and teens hope for lives filled with love and health, success, and happiness for them. We wish that we can protect them from disappointments and rejections and illness and from loss. But perhaps what's most realistic is to give our teens the strength and resilience to overcome obstacles that they may face. As human beings, we all will feel discouraged or hurt at times. But resiliency means that one can bounce back. Resiliency is the ability to manifest life's challenges in ways that promote health and wholeness, to be able to bounce back from stresses and adversity. In our time together, we are going to take moments to think about how Jewish tradition can serve as a blueprint for instilling resiliency in our teens. Along the way, we might learn a few things about ourselves as well. In this week's class, we are going to be focusing on teenage brain development. This research and knowledge undoubtedly can help us in our work with teens. Recent research has found that adult and teen brains work very differently. Adults think with their prefrontal cortex, the brain's rational part. But teens process information with the amygdala, the emotional part. And it's the prefrontal cortex that responds to situations with good judgment and an awareness of long-term consequences. The connections between the emotional part of the brain and the decision-making center are in development in teen brains. So that's why when they've been under the influence of overwhelmingly emotional input, teens can't explain later what they were thinking. See, they weren't thinking as much as they were feeling. So based on this stage of their brain development, adolescents are more likely to act on impulse, misread or misinterpret social cues and emotions, get into accidents of all kinds, make mistakes, get involved in fights, and sometimes test their limits, engaging in risky behavior. Adolescents are li less likely to think before they act, pause to consider the consequences of their actions, change their dangerous or inappropriate behaviors. But here's the thing. These brain differences don't mean that teens can't make good decisions or act with their prefrontal cortex or tell the difference between what's right and wrong. And it doesn't mean that they shouldn't be held responsible for their actions. However, an awareness of these differences can help us understand and anticipate and manage the behavior of adolescents. So, before you get to work, there's a piece of housekeeping that I want to address. I am going to be out of town from July 20th through 27th, so don't be surprised if my response time is not as quick as it will be when I return. I'll be checking our online platform once or twice, as well as my email, and respond to any pressing items. I look forward to getting to know you and learn with you over the next few weeks.